Beauties, my name is Dr. Stephanie Cappell, and today I'm going to be looking at the camera, not at the lens. Hi, my Beauties, my name is Dr. Stephanie Cappell, and I'm a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach. And today I'm going to be talking about body skin tightening. I get a lot of requests in my office, seeing patients, and also on my YouTube and my Instagram asking what can we do to tighten body skin because we're so focused on the face and the neck and the chest and the hands, but sometimes we often neglect skin on other areas of the body, the arms, the legs, the abdomen, and so forth. So before I move on, I ask that you like and subscribe and share this video with anyone who may find it useful or any other skin nerds out there who love skin and skin science and aesthetics as much as we do. So my history and background of being a Mohs micrographic skin cancer surgeon, I looked at skin under the microscope for years. Skin off the face, when I would excise squamous cell and basal cell carcinomas and even melanoma, off of the arms, the legs, the face, I really had an appreciation for how different skin looked under the microscope, which we call it histologically, depending on what area of the body or the face that skin was coming from. And so skin on the body is different than skin on the face and different than skin on the neck and the decollete as well. It lacks a lot of sebaceous glands. It lacks a lot of the um, structures that the skin on the face com is composed of. And it also um, has things like terminal hairs and is very different than skin on the face. So certain treatments and procedures or active ingredients and skincare products that we use on our face, we wouldn't really necessarily need for our body skin and vice versa. And um, treatments that we do in the office and procedures that we do um, for body contouring or to enhance the appearance of our skin on the body may be a little bit different than what we do on the face. For example, skin on the body, you know, lacks oil glands and sebaceous glands. The um, composition of the skin is different. It could be thinner or thicker with respect to the dermis or the epidermis. There may be more viable hair follicles on the body, like say, for example, the arms and the legs than there are on the face, you know, for women and um, things of that nature. So it's really important to, when you're talking about the skin, knowing what area of the body that we're talking about. And when talking about the arms and the legs and the abdomen, the skin can be thinner there. Um, it can lie a lot of collagen and elastin that doesn't really happen until you hit a certain age and then it just starts to burn out like wildfire. You have a loss of collagen and elastin. You start to have crepiness of the skin and that kind of textural wrinkled irregularity that you didn't have when you were younger. And it kind of is fine until you hit a certain age and then it starts going downhill. So what are some of the things that we can do in the office and at home to help maintain that beautiful skin on all areas of our body? So one of the first signs of aging on our arms and our legs and other areas of the body that are not the face, um, we lose collagen and we lose elastin. Collagen and elastin are extracellular matrix proteins that give skin that turgor. It gives it that tensile strength. Babies and kids have a ton of it. That's why their little arms and legs are so squishy and they you know, um, don't get wrinkled and they don't get lax. When you start to lose or have denaturation or degradation of our collagen and elastin, which not only happens with age, but also happens happens when our skin's exposed to different environmental, you know, insults and you know, pollutants and toxins and UV light um, on a day-to-day -day basis, which is an accumulation over a lifetime, we start to lose those proteins. So skin treatments in the office that can help induce our body's own regenerative processes to stimulate the synthesis of elastin and collagen uh, in our skin helps smooth and um, tighten that contour. Now, we can do that by biostimulatory fillers, calcium hydroxyapatite, which is also known as radius, doing hyperdilute radius for collagen stimulation ability, it stimulates the fibroblast cells, which are the cells in our skin that make collagen to help increase their collagen production to help, you know, with that contour and to help tighten skin. Sculptra is polyolectic acid, which is another biostimulatory filler that we commonly do on the body to help, you know, kind of kick our skin into high gear to make that collagen and elastin that our cells stopped making as we age or, you know, making to replenish collagen and elastin that has been degraded or damaged over time with age. So typically when I talk about biostimulatory fillers, um, it's called referred to as CAHA, which I just recently attended in an academic meeting and all of the doctors and dermatologists and experts were calling calcium hydroxy appetite CAHA. That's also, um, radius is another, you know, the trade name for that biostimulatory filler. Doing about three treatments based one month apart. Now say, you know, this is one of the most common areas that people complain about having creepiness 
this or usually above the knees or in the middle of the thighs or you know after having babies in the abdomen doing you know about three treatments based one month apart with one to two vials of hybrid dilute radius or calcium hydroxyapatite or CAHA can help stimulate um, collagen and elastin synthesis to help smooth contoured and lax skin now it's not going to be the same result as like a you know a, a lift by a plastic surgeon but usually when plastic surgeons perform those um, procedures like an arm lift or a leg lift you're left with like a scarring that's pretty disfiguring either on the inner surface of the arm or even around the circumferential area of the leg or in the medial thigh so you know it's always important to manage expectations and know that these biostimulatory fillers yes they'll make an improvement but oftentimes you need about three treatments spaced one month apart and results last about two to three years but it's not going to be the same result as a surgery result would give you but the upside to certain than having surgery and why I feel it's better than having surgery is you're not left with this very disfiguring scar and also even when you have an arm lift or a leg lift by a plastic surgeon and even if you can tolerate the scarring gravity eventually will take its toll and get you back to where mm -hmm. you were before and so giving your skin that extra collagen and elastin and tensile strength to withhold and um you know kind of increase the duration of your surgical results is always a better approach to um, tightening lax skin or weathered skin or wrinkled skin with um, texture regularities over time than surgery is done in the office um, that includes lasers and tightening devices can also help increase collagen and elastin stores to help smooth and tighten the contour of the skin. Now, my two favorite treatments are Thermage, which is an energy-based device which uses heat in the form of radio frequency to stimulate fibroblastic synthesis of collagen and elastin. I always use this teaching point when I teach the residents and uh, medical students. When heat is applied to the skin, your fibroblasts, which are the collagen-producing cells in your skin and your body, make a bunch of collagen. To take an extreme case, if you ever have a burn injury on your skin, say you burn you know, your hand on a stove, or say somebody um, is unfortunate enough to be in like a fire or have you know, some type of burn injury or thermal injury, their skin produces a lot of collagen, which can also make a plaque-like keloidal scar or a hypertrophic scar. What do scars look like clinically? They're very disfiguring and they're not something that you would want for a cosmetic treatment, but if you look at scars from burns under the microscope, they're chock full of a bunch of thick pink collagen and we know that because the skin responds to heat with collagen. Now what Thermage and a lot of these energy-based devices do, whether it's microfocus ultrasound, monopolar or bipolar radio frequency, microwave, any form of energy that goes into the skin and produces heat is going to turn on the fibroblast to make collagen. Now you don't want to cause a keloid or a hypertrophic scar, so the, in the genius of the technology and the, the um, technology in these uh, device hand pieces basically heats up the lower structure of the skin to produce a lot of collagen while keeping the upper portion of the epidermis cool. And so you're not inducing scars, but you're inducing that same kind of reaction that the skin gives in a very controlled and elegant manner to make a lot of collagen to our advantage, which is going to lift, tighten, pull, and smooth contour. So that's why these energy-based devices, this is the mechanism of action and how they work. And it also is very operator dependent. If you look online and you search it and you see some people say, I had an amazing thermage result. And some people say, I didn't notice the difference at all. It's very operator dependent. In my practice, it's myself and my colleague who's also a board certified dermatologist who do these treatments. Now, sometimes if you go to treat a, you know, an area where somebody is less qualified or they don't really understand the physics or the mechanism action of how to heat stack, how to do the vectors, how to you know, concentrate the pulses. They get, there's, you get what you pay for it. And sometimes when you have maybe somebody who doesn't have the expertise and is at a lower level with their training with respect to how to use the thermosh device, you're not going to get the same results as a slam dunk case that's done like the appropriate way, you know, with the most um, effective treatment possible. So if you, you know, look it up online and you see maybe plus or minus reviews on Thermage, it's very operator dependent. So just keep that in mind. Because lasers can have a traumatic um, impact on overall skin texture by the same mechanism, stimulating collagen and elastin. Lasers do this more superficially. If you look at a cross section of the skin, you have the epidermis, you have the dermis, which is, which is composed of the papillary dermis, the reticular dermis, and then you have the subcutaneous fat. When you're talking about energy-based devices, like Thermage, that stimulates collagen in the deeper structures of the skin. It actually stimulates it in the upper areas of the skin too, but most of that, um, you know, uh, volumetric heating and collagen stimulation is deeper. Lasers are up a little bit higher in the epidermis. So when you do them together, like Thermifrax, for example, combines Thermage 
which is energy-based radio frequency tightening, with Fraxel, which is a laser that stimulates collagen in the um, upper, more superficial aspects of the skin. It's kind of a slam dunk when you do them together. It's like a one plus one equals three reaction, and that's what we call thermofrax. But for people who just want to do just Fraxel or a laser resurfacing treatment alone, that will also help smooth the texture of the skin, especially, like I said, that inner arm area where the skin gets crepey and lax, the medial thighs above the knees, the lower abdomen, sometimes we'll combine, you know, thermage and fraxel together. Sometimes we just do fraxel together some, or alone, and sometimes we just do thermage alone. And sometimes we'll file in a little biostimulatory filler. There's so many different approaches to tighten skin on the body. It just sometimes is a combination of different treatments. Sometimes we do each treatment alone so you can see which treatment is giving the best result. You can kind of separate them in time and space so that you can see what, you know, treatment is more efficacious. And then sometimes it's just, you know, a whole treatment treatment plan, um, doing one treatment and seeing how you do and following it up with another if needed. And if not needed, you're happy with, you know, one treatment instead of the other. Say you just do thermage and you're like, great, I love these results. I'm fine. I would like to stop here. But sometimes people will say, oh, that gave me a great result. And now I want even more. Let's throw in a little Fraxel or let's throw in a little biostimulatory filler. And so it's just, it, it's, there's an art to it and it's a more customized approach, but each individual is different. And just knowing what treatments are available and the mechanism of action in the way that they work is really is really everything and knowledge is power and that's the reason why I do these videos to kind of just give it to you straight let you know how these treatments work and then you can kind of decide if it's something that you would want to pursue or not and again I always like to mention in my videos that I'm not sponsored I don't take any paid sponsorships I even have lasers that I really really like and the laser company will offer to give it to me if I will you know sponsor their device or you know post their device and I always say no I pay full price for everything and I like to keep it that way because I have unbiased um, unbiased recommendations for my patients, my viewers, my subscribers, and I feel that I'm a rarity nowadays because a lot of germs on YouTube do pay sponsorships and they do have affiliate, and that's okay too. That's totally um, acceptable and that's their own choice, but for me personally, I just really love the autonomy and the freedom to just be able to post what I really truth is feel it is best and I never want to feel like oh I owe this you know device company to say something about them because they gave me some kickback or a discount on the laser so I actually don't accept any paid partnerships or sponsorships I am a KOL or a key opinion leader for certain devices or injectables that I really like but not because you know I get paid to do it it's just because I really um, truly believe in their products whether it's a laser or a device or an injectable and just want to have the the freedom to just change my mind if the next day something better comes along and I just will you know kind of just change with the times and um, just be able to offer authentic, um, true, you know, uh, recommendations for my patients and for my subscribers. But again, I just would like to emphasize that if, you know, my colleagues do do paid sponsorships, that's not a negative thing. It's just that's not the way I practice and the way I like to run my social media accounts. So nothing negative about it. I just choose not to do that myself. But for those who follow me and who subscribe, I just want you to know that this is pure recommendations from, you know, my experience with either clinical trials or just by anecdotal data and what I see day to day in the office. And um, also what I hear when we go to our academic meetings from world renowned experts in the field of laser medicine and cosmetic dermatology. So moving on, we've already talked about lasers and energy-based devices and biostimulatory injectables to fix crepey skin on the body. So now what could we do to improve brown spots or light spots or redness of the, of the skin on the body? Same with you know lasers for the face. Lasers on the skin, on the body, and the arms and legs are really important to help not only reverse photo damage and can also decrease your risk of skin cancer and precancerous lesions, which dermatologists refer Refer to as actinic keratosis, but also if you have a brown spot, this little guy behind me, this is the Pico laser. Pico is like a brown spot eraser, and Pico is great for eliminating brown spots. A lot of times, people have it on the backs of their hands, and that can really age you when you have these brown spots on the back of the hands. Pico is a whiz at getting rid of the brown spots. So, doing a little Pico laser to erase brown spots, sometimes a fraxel, if there's like all over diffuse, you know, light spots, dark spots, redness, um, telangiectasias, or blood vessels, and just photo damage. 
um, Fraxel is kind of my go-to laser for just erasing diffuse sun damage, whereas Pico is more of like a spot treatment laser to get rid of brown spots. There's another entity in dermatology called idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. Now that's a very long name for white spots. Why do some people have these little white spots? A lot of people mistake them for vitiligo or um, some deleterious dermatologic condition, but basically it's just when your melanocytes get sun damage, they stop producing melanin. And Fraxel is one of my favorite lasers for kind of rejuvenating the skin and stimulating those melanocytes to make more melanin. A lot of it has to do with scar tissue buildup and photo damage that has inhibited the melanocytes from repopulating the epidermis. I know I'm talking too scientific. I hear myself getting too nerdy, but I know you guys love my nerdiness. So basically in English, what I'm saying is Fraxel can help erase white spots by allowing the melanocytes to evenly populate the epidermis and to kind of reverse sun damage that has caused those white spots or idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. I don't know why dermatologists like to give really long elaborate names for pretty simple things. Like why couldn't they just call it white spots? But if you want to be nerdy and know the, the, um, the history behind that name, so idiopathic means it just happens. Um, gut tape means raindrops. I think like in I think in Latin, I'm pretty sure. Gut tape just means raindrops, and hypo means low. Melanosis means pigment. So you basically have little raindrop, less pigmented areas that happen. We don't know why. That's what idiopathic gut tape hypomelanosis means. So that was your dermatology lesson of the day. See, now you don't have to do a medical school and residency and fellowship training. So um, the Fraxel is really, really great. It's kind of evening out those white spots. And then if there's ever any like ruddiness or redness to like, especially like the chest, which I guess is off face and neck area of the body, or even like a readiness or redness to like the arms or the legs or the abdomen, V-beam is a really great laser for kind of getting rid of that uh, redness and that weather beaten kind of ready look to the skin. So now we've talked about lasers and devices for treating brown spots, light spots, redness, texture, stimulating collagen. What are we missing? We even talked about biostimulatory fillers, what we do at home. What we do at home is really important too. So one of my favorite tricks for kind of helping with the texture on the arms and the legs is either using, now you can go prescription strength or you can go over the counter. Any alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs or not so much BHAs because that's beta hydroxy acids really um, more important for um, acne, but amlactin, which is ammonium lactate lotion. You can get it at any drugstore. You can get it on Amazon. Ammonium lactate is, um, it contains an alpha hydroxy acid that can help hydrate the skin and can help um, resurface the skin on a, you know, like a topical level. So basically using amlactin, um, drugstore brand, you could just use it twice a day. You'll notice an improvement in the texture of the skin. Skin, even kind of some fading of the brown spots and it's a really I think it's like eight to twelve dollars depending on where you get it and um, it's a it's a great thing to use at home and um, that's more like a drugstore um, pricing now if you wanted to do a tretinoin a prescription strength tretinoin like a tretinoin 0.25 percent or a 0.05 percent or a tretinoin 0.1 percent taking like a pea-sized amount and just getting like regular like CeraVe cream or whatever like body hydrator or moisturizer you use on a day-to-day -day basis can sometimes be helpful doing that once or twice a week. I sometimes do that once or twice a week. I'll take like a dime-sized or pea-sized amount of tretinoin and I use a 0.05%. I get some CeraVe or Cetaphil cream and I mix it in the palm of my hands and I'll put it on my arms or my, you know, my legs or anywhere else where I just kind of want to get a little bit of improvement in the texture. So that's something that you can do at home because you don't have to spend like a ton of money, ton of money on like elastin body transform that has a trihex technology and stimulates collagen and elastin. That's amazing too. But I know that, you know, like me, some of you probably want to concentrate more of your, you know, high technology, high medical grade skincare products for like your face, neck, and chest. And when it comes to the body, you can, you know, be spending a lot of money on a large body surface area. So doing like a little bit of tretinoin mixed with your favorite body hydrator or um, even getting some amylactin um, from a drugstore would be a great option for you. And also always photo protect, not just from the sun, but just from blue light, HEV light, environmental toxins, and pollutants. So if you could wear sunscreen on your body when it's exposed um, to the atmosphere, you know, if you're wearing long sleeves and long pants, it's not as important. But if you're out in the sun, just don't remember, don't forget to put um, sunscreen on your legs and your abdomen and your arms as well. So I hope this helps. I've had a lot of questions on body skin improvement and things that we can do in office and at home um, to improve the texture and the cosmesis of the skin. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching and sharing this video with anyone may, who may find it useful. And thank you so much for being part of my unsponsored dermatology skin science family. I love you guys.